All right, everyone, I think we're ready to restart. So uh, why don't we get started here? The next session we have is uh, what I call my favorite workflows. Uh, this is actually generated from what I hear from you folks out there when uh, I deal with uh, my customers. A lot of ideas come through and a lot of questions come up repeatedly. And therefore, uh, I like to uh, help out as I can. And in that effort, I've generated uh, a lot of uh, good little tips here today. So I wanted to show you uh, what uh, we can do with LaserFish workflow. Uh, the subheading on this is simple and effective workflows in 20 minutes. So if we're talking about an hour, maybe I can get through three workflows here with you. Uh, and we may go a little bit longer or a little bit shorter, but I'll be answering your questions as we go along. So feel free to raise your hand and ask a question as well. So let's look at three workflows that uh, we might uh, look at and ones that I feel are common. Uh, one of the workflows that I build quite often for my customers is uh, adding a new subfolder to your existing folder. Uh, you might have a project folder and you need to add a, a folder for the current year or for a new project and you want to add that in multiple places. Well, we can use workflow to do that very easily. Another example of a workflow might be to rename an existing subfolder that already is in your repository, but you need to change it and it exists in multiple places, several hundred locations, and based on the name you might need to go and change them. Well, doing that manually could take quite a long time. Uh, building a workflow in 10 minutes uh, could save a lot of effort and then you can reuse that workflow later on. And the third workflow is uh, to use business process workflows to allow users themselves to make specific actions. And so I kind of didn't quite tell you the truth. This is actually two more workflows, so you get five workflows for the price of three. Uh, the first uh, workflow is uh, using a business process workflow to delete shortcuts in a current folder. So you'd be in a folder and you say, hey, you know what, I need to delete all the shortcuts in this folder uh, and any subfolders and get rid of those because there are cases where you, uh, you might have a uh, shortcut to an older document that never was removed, either manually or for some other reason, so we might need to remove that. Another workflow is to use business process to rename a document. You might want to highlight a document and based on some naming conventions, rename that document. And we all know this happens quite often. You realize, oh, you know what, this document should have a date on it, it should have the uh, document type and the customer's name on that document name itself, but you know, typing it in correctly, using it in the correct order with those three fields or more uh, can be time consuming and not always consistent if an end user is making the, that change themselves. So why don't we use workflow to change the document name in the manner we want with one click? And let's do that using a business process workflow. So I'll show you an example of that. And uh, another workflow using business process would be to uh, tag a folder. Uh, in this case, I'm going to show you how to tag an empty folder for deletion. But we can change this into tagging a document because it meets certain other criteria. And so we'll go through an example of that as well. So the first of my favorite workflows is to add a new subfolder to all your existing folders. And as you can see, uh, the scenario here would be uh, in January of the coming year, 2016, we want to add another 2016 folder to our existing tax folder. Uh, as you can see, you've already got 2013, 14, and 15 as your folders, but you realize, you know what, all of my client files uh, in the tax folder, I need to add that 2016 folder. And that's time consuming when you do it manually, but workflow can do this very quickly and just in seconds. So what we'll do is we'll go through that process. So the workflow uses three activities. It's really simple. Uh, the workflow is going to use a search repository activity. If you've uh, seen that, it basically you give it some criteria to search for and then it returns search results. The for each entry activity is tied to that search res results and will process each of those results individually. And then within that for each 
entry activity is a create entry activity. And I'll let you guess what we're going to create. The search criteria, when you type that in, you, you have your search uh, repository activity. The for each entry activity needs to be tied back to that search entry. So I wanted to point that out here. Uh, you'll see it in the demonstration that uh, we do here. But you'll, as you can see, on the right-hand side, uh, on the left-hand side of this uh, slide, the properties are pointing back to the search repository at client files activity. That's been renamed. Out of the box, uh, the search repository activity is just called search repository, but you can rename any of the activities that you're putting in into workflow. And that's what I've done here. The demonstration here today is going to cycle through two levels of folders, so we need to do two searches, basically a search within a search. And that's what I'm pointing out here in this slide. The first search gives us the clients, uh, those folders for all the clients. And then the second search says find that tax folder. So you notice that the second search looks for a folder where the name is tax. And you can see that tax name right here. And then for each of those results, we then do a create entry in which we create a folder called 2016. So let's go ahead and do that live here. What if sometimes the folders were named tax or taxes? The Right. The, the question is, if you have a, a folder called tax or taxes, plural, uh, how do you search for those? Now, we can, in the search criteria, look for both at the same time. Yes. Question. The question is, can we add more than just the 2016 folder at that same level? I'm assuming at the same level? Yeah. Yep. Oh, and then below the 2016 yeah. folder. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, workflow is very flexible in that manner. We can add subfolders underneath a folder uh, whenever we want. Uh, so we can build that into the demo. All right. So let me go back here. Okay. So let's switch to. I think that's Patrick's new. Okay. So now we're on our. LaserView system, and we want to open Okay, thank you Patrick is just getting me situated here. Uh, the workflow designer is where we do our work. So I'll launch the LaserFish workflow designer here. And the workflow designer can be installed on any desktop that you need. So anybody who is in charge of building workflows or maintaining workflows can have that at their desktop. Uh, because everything's saved on a server level, that this workflow uh, designer can be used by anybody who needs it. And we can also add security so that you can see only the workflows you might need to maintain. Uh, if you have uh, questions on that, I can address that later. Uh, but I wanted to point out, let me collapse some of these. In the workflow designer, if you're familiar with it, you can actually add your own subfolders here, which I've done for our demonstration, and added in my workflows uh, here. So the first uh, workflow is the create 2016 subfolder. So let's take a look at that. Uh, it, in this case, it does not have any starting rules because we're just going to run it as we uh, see it in place. So you can double click on it or click view workflow and that will bring up the workflow itself. And if you've seen the workflow designer, here's our search activity at the very top, like I said before. Uh, and then it's followed by a for each entry activity, which then uh, needs to do another search for those tax folders and then we'll create the tax uh, 2016 folder underneath tax. But let's take a closer look here at the activity itself. So the search entry activity, every activity that you highlight within Workflow Designer 
will show you the properties on the left uh, right hand side of the screen in blue and uh, we know that it is uh, tied to the repository and then the criteria itself is found in the search query box here and just a point of information I don't memorize typically all the syntax here that we've done this syntax is actually generated by the LaserFish client so I'll actually go into the LaserFish client I'll create my search in the search pane but I'll add the advanced option down below and then grab that advanced search criteria and paste it in here because I don't have to you know invent it all on my own so for example uh, we have the I don't can't see it here but if I were to go into the search pane uh, I could uh, click that choose the values and then paste it in here so that's what I've done typically the name is just search for any folder uh, that is in the uh, advisor level here uh, we have a uh, advisor level and then we need to search for the tax folder and in this case you can kind of see it here it says just tax uh, we could add as you asked uh, earlier can we look for both tax or taxes and we can we can just add another name search and typically you can use a or and then just reuse this syntax here and look for is it taxes plural with an S or is it spelled ES uh, that's how we search for multiple folder names in the same area what if we didn't want to search because I'm just looking at this we just have the client name and then we have you open the client name folder and it just says 2013 and 2014 etc it doesn't have the word tax so you could you add a folder to everyone and Right. Uh, the question is, if you opened up a client folder and the tax folder did not exist, could you create that tax folder uh, either beforehand or in general? Yes. Uh, we can. This this is an example of creating the 2016 folder under an existing tax folder. But if tax didn't exist it, consistently, at least, mm -hmm. under uh, your client folders, this would be a very similar workflow. Uh, instead of 2016, we might just go back up one level and say, okay, create the tax folder. Yeah, because I see it was created in some of them, uh, but not in the old ones from previous. Okay, so if it's inconsistent yeah, as far as uh, the folders existing, then it could create those where they do not exist. In fact, workflow, when you tell it to create a folder, if that folder already exists in that area, it doesn't recreate a new one. It just says, great, it exists, I'll skip and go to the next one. So it doesn't recreate them if they already exist. So you don't have to put any rules into workflow that says, if 2016 already exists, skip this one. You don't even have to do that. Just say, create it, and it will create it if it does not exist. And if it does, then it just goes right ahead and skips over it. So workflow is fairly intelligent in, in that regard. And then, because we found all of our tax folders, each tax folder needs to be uh, implemented with a uh, folder called 2016. And the properties here are for the create um, 2016 folder you notice there's the uh, entry name itself 2016 we can create document names or folder names so in this case we're creating an entry that is a folder so we select folder and the destination is going to be the current entries full path well the question is what's the current entries full path that doesn't make any sense well it really if you think about it the path of that taxes folder is the current full path right so that's where we're going to put this new folder and that's why we use this token this token is just simply chosen from our token selector and we can say you know what for each tax folder I'm going to choose and put that 2016 folder into the full path so tokens are very valuable here within workflow and we can get into detail later on or we can do that one-on-one -on -one if you prefer uh, but be aware that we can use tokens many places in workflow and uh, it gives us a lot of power so that uh, we don't have to retype every folder path that we want uh, we can just kind of reuse that folder and that path 
And workflow itself is really neat. Uh, once you've built out the workflow with all your properties, in this case, this is a workflow that has a search that begins the workflow. So any workflows that have search built into it, you're typically going to either schedule it for working after hours, for example, or if you want to run it immediately, you can actually click and run the current workflow from within workflow. So we have this play button, and that's uh, what we can do here. Uh, let's take a look. And let me just minimize this for a moment. Go back to laser fish. And we're going to go to our client files folder. So we're going to go in and in the first five levels, first five clients here. Uh, so we have a tax folder. And if we look at the tax folder for uh, Jesse, there is no 2016 folder, correct? Not doing any uh, fancy tricks here. Uh, Eric Anderson, there's a tax folder. Uh, there's no 2016 folder here. Uh, so if that's the case, uh, let's go ahead and go to our workflow. And let's go ahead and run that. And when you run a workflow, it pops up and says, hey, did you really want to run it? And we'll say, yes, uh, we want to run the workflow. We'll click uh, OK. And did I make any changes? Well, not really. Uh, it's just because I was clicking in there, it asked me, did you want to save those changes? But uh, there was no change made. So workflow is running. And in fact, if you want, you can even see under the common searches here, there's a recent activity button. We can say, hey, show me what just ran in the last few minutes, in the last 15 minutes. And notice that the workflow actually has completed. So it ran. It even tells us how long it took, what the name is, et cetera. So you can see that it ran at 32 seconds and ended at 41 seconds. So very quick. Uh, with that said, let's go back and see what happened. Well, look at that. Remember, there was no 2016 folder there in these folders. So we look in tax and, oh, hey, there's a 2016 folder. There's now a 2016 folder. So workflow has done what we might have to do manually and take us several minutes uh, for one or you know just a click through. It might take us hours to do hundreds of these. Workflow can do in just a matter of seconds or minutes. Any questions so far? No? OK. So let's. Uh, that folder is now in everybody's. Correct. Uh, the folder is now in every tax folder for every client. Uh, main folder. Yes? Oh, the question is how do you set up a schedule in workflow so that the workflow that we just built runs on a schedule? And the way you do that is back in the rule manager, you should have a tab up here at the top in the middle of workflow designer called the rule manager. And this workflow, we simply would add a starting rule. and we have a choice of the types of starting conditions. Is it a condition or a schedule? In this case, we'll make it a schedule. And then we can say, OK, it's going to start every day at 5 PM, and it'll repeat however often we want. So this schedule can be repetitive, or just once, or once a month, whenever you prefer. And if you have something where you need a workflow to run uh, over the course of several times a day, uh, one would simply say, make it daily and then rerun it every you know, uh, hour. Is there an option for annually? Uh, yep. Yeah. You can run the, well, you might do run on this month and run every. You figure it's only run on the first day of January to only add anything to like add an additional years? Right. Um, it's under configure. You set them up. The configure here, uh, okay. we can do, uh, as uh, one of the uh, attendees here mentioned, we can set uh, running the activity every first day of whichever month you prefer. So that would help you run it either once every December or whatnot. So yes, you can. Okay. Thank you. And so the workflow, the nursing, so if I want to do it for 2017, it's already there. 
the question is, if you've already set this up, is it ready for 2017? Uh, you would just pre-build it into your workflow. Uh, and then if you wanted to, for example, uh, instead of adding not only the 2016 folder, but you wanted to add 2017 at the same time, uh, we could do that within the workflow itself. I just finished that out. And let's just copy this activity and paste another version in here and simply make this one 2017. So for each tax folder, it would add two folders. Did I? That well, no, mine was the same. I mean, can I use that same template next year, but just changing the dates? Oh, exactly, yeah. So if you wanted to just run this next year, it's always there, and it's always saved, correct, yeah. Can you show what it looked like to do a subfolder of that folder? Uh, okay, so the question is, can I show how to create subfolders underneath that subfolder? And it's a great question. Let, let's go through that. Let's do a um, uh, an example here. So we want to create a subfolder under our 2016 folder called 1099, for example. Uh, but how do you put it underneath this newly created folder? Well, what we want to do is add a activity. We'll go to our toolbox. And we want to simply, uh, well, actually, we can do it right here within the uh, creation of the new folder, this 1099 folder. And what we can do is we can use a token. Let me scroll this screen here. And so for the created entry that's just occurred uh, previously, so for that current that output entry of the 2016 folder, that's the token that we're going to use. We're going to say, hey, use that 2016 folder, which is the output entry and the full path. Create this 1099 folder in that location. And in fact, why don't we run that, uh, we'll save this workflow and run that and show you its work right here. Okay, and uh, we have a question coming from the internet as well. So Brendan is asking, can you use a formula to calculate the value in the entry name, i.e. year of current date? Uh, the question is, can you use a formula to calculate the year of the current date? Uh, and yes, we actually have tokens that allow us to do that. We can pull out just the year of a date. Uh, so built into workflow without having to do any extra programming yourself or create uh, any uh, scripts that might have to do that for you. LaserFish workflow can do that. I can show you that in a moment. The uh, workflow has now been saved, so let's go ahead and run that workflow again. And so those 2016 folders, we should not see any new 2016 folders get created. However, in that 2016 folder, there's your 1099 folder. So built within workflow, it's very simple. It, it, it's just a minor tweak, but yes. Uh, Multiple folders can be created under any folder. Question? Would those have the same property um, as Docu or a, another folder that is linked to a document that's templated and auto filed? Um, I guess it can be explained a little bit. You have a word in the accounting department. So when you have checks, we would add template fields like name of the payee, payer, the amount, date, and then we would. Auto file it so that it automatically goes to the folder that's needed. This will create a secondary folder. Really. Well, this workflow, the question is uh, if you were to use uh, LaserFish as a auto uh, the workflow uh, with an auto filing capability for documents, and the document came into this 1099 folder, for example, uh, clarify your question. D does the folder need to have uh, metadata assigned to it? Oh, no, well, no. if the document is being uh, auto-filed to a 1099 folder, uh, if the 1099, sorry, 1099 folder exists already, the document will go in there. If it does not, but it's supposed to go into a 1099 folder that does not exist in that path, it will create that 1099, 1099 folder for you. Right, but so. But if I were run this again, it, it would not create this because you said it doesn't double create. Correct. Uh, this workflow, uh, if it already exists, and workflow in general, if the folder already exists, it doesn't create a new one. So, uh, yes. All right. So, 
let's say we had, and I'll address the uh, question about the uh, uh, date in my next presentation. The date, in fact, uh, you'll love it. Uh, further along, it actually shows you how you can pull that out. Um, so bear with me, and uh, we'll get back to our next uh, workflow. Okay, so the second workflow is one that I find is uh, quite commonly uh, requested, and it's how do you rename an existing folder? And it's quite funny, Maria asks about taxes versus tax folders. So the uh, situation is the, uh, the folder was already called tax, but we want to rename that folder, whatever it may be. If you have a project folder and it's, uh, you know, the project name has changed, but it's all over the place and you need to change multiple project folder names, we can use Workflow to do that. If you have an accounting folder in the AP department and you need to change folder names there, uh, this is a pretty common request. So how do we do that? Uh, it is, again, much like the previous Workflow, uh, you'll use the same uh, activities. You'll use your search repository activity. We then need to take action on the return results. And the return results are the for each entry. And then all we're simply going to do is do a rename activity. The flow of that workflow looks very similar to my previous workflow example. We do a search. And then for those returned values, we rename the entry. And so we use that rename entry activity. All right, so we'll switch back into the Workflow Designer. And I'm going to close out my Workflow here. Uh, I put the tab. I can right-click and choose Close. I don't need to have this Workflow 1, which always comes up. I don't need that. And so down here, my second Workflow is, let's rename that tax folder. <clears throat> Again, you can make it a scheduled task. Uh, scheduled workflow by editing the, and adding a start rule. Uh, but if we jump into the workflow itself, the search criteria, again, looks similar. We're going to look at that folder called tax. And in this case, I'm not looking through all the subfolders uh, based on client. I'm just saying, you know what, I'm going to look under the client and the advisor folder here in this case and just look for the folder called tax because I don't care where it is. Uh, if it exists, I need to rename it. So it's kind of a simple work, you know, workflow search. Uh, again, that for each tax folder entry or for each entry activity, I've renamed it here. The way you do that is if you come over here on our properties, <clears throat> you are shown the activity that occurs previous. And you just say, use the output entries from that search. And we're going to cycle through each one of those. Okay. And then within the for each entry, we're just simply going to rename that folder. And I've chosen to make it all caps so that it stands out. Uh, one thing to remember, though, for these renames, out of the box, it's going to choose starting entry. So you need to tell this rename activity to function within this for each entry. So over here on the right side on the properties, one wants to make sure that you're using the current entry. Because otherwise, if you don't, it's going to use the starting entry, and that's going to be one folder, and it's just going to cycle over and over on that single folder instead of the several folders that you really want to rename. So make sure you use that uh, property and make sure you rename the proper entry, which is the retrieved or each entry. With that said, we've got our name in place, and then we can run the workflow. Click Run Workflow. Click OK. And it runs rather rapidly. It jumps back and says, hey, I ran. And if you've ever looked at a workflow instance, which is basically the work workflow I just ran, it shows you that everything's green. That means it ran properly, no mistakes, no nothing, uh, all good. And so let's go switch back to the <clears throat> folder here. And I'm going to collapse everything. And notice, remember that tax folder? It's now renamed. Taxes. Let's double check. Oh, okay. There we go. And onwards 
it keeps on renaming them. Now, it does not affect anything underneath. No folders or documents are changed underneath. It's just that folder level alone. So as you can see, a very powerful workflow, very easy to do. Another internet question here. All right. Can you use uh, a workflow to find a certain type of document, like an image, et cetera? The internet question is, can you find a certain type of document, whether it's an image document, a Word document, yes. The workflow can, basically any search that you can do in the client can be done in workflow. In fact, you can do more in workflow than you can in the client in many cases uh, because we can use advanced criteria. And so that allows us to do these nested searches, which you um, sometimes can do in the client by using that refine capability in the search pane in the client. But workflow makes it a lot easier. So yes, workflow, can do anything you can do in the client, and that does include searches for uh, workflow by PDF, like the extension is .pdf, or, or uh, if it's a Word document. We can do all kinds of searches like that, so yes. Uh, in the workflow, we just ran, uh, we saw that it went all green, and uh, that's fantastic. Uh, any questions on that workflow? Yes. Uh, the question is, is there a specific method or way that you need to name documents or use the activity to name documents? And uh, I guess my, quick, my answer would be no. There's no constraints on using this rename function. It basically says, if you're telling me to rename this folder, uh, just type in the way you want it renamed. Now, uh, this is kind of a static rename, and we're going to say, okay, rename this folder from tax to taxes. However, if I wanted to, I might even want to add a flexible or dynamic token. Uh, so you could say, hey, let's put in not only uh, the, the static name called taxes, but let's put in today's date on that, doc, on that folder. So you can be very creative about how you name documents and folders. Naming a folder with the date might not make sense, but if you name a document with the token of today's date, that makes sense because the document came in on this day was, and that's, and this date field, by the way, is the Laserfish uh, created date, not the do document date that might be relevant to that document per se. But we can use tokens to be very flexible in our naming conventions. So that's how we're using it, right? It's really by the tokens that drops into the, the box, like the drop-down box. Uh, that's what's driving it. I'm just saying, like, when you create a formula, if you if you use a bracket instead of a parenthetical or something, it won't pick it up, but we're creating it in the token, right? In the naming uh, f field value. In that field which then populates. And this is populated in the name of the folder, but if you're talking about um, naming, uh, it's right, because the path of then is then being updated. Yeah. And in search criteria, does it have reporting capability? So like if you wanted it to find you know, all the items in you know, X folder within, you know, for each client, does it have the ability to create a report? The, the question is, does Laserfish have the ability to generate what might look as a uh, report? Uh, basically collect all the documents that might be in a folder based on date range. Uh, and so, yes, the answer is yes. The uh, search that you might do in the client to find those documents is the same thing you could do here in Workflow. And uh, I've just done this uh, recently. I generated a uh, monthly invoice report where we cycle through a vendor folder look for all the current uh, invoices for the previous month and generate that list in an email and send that to the AP clerk who then can double check that they are in their AP system. Uh, so we can generate all kinds of reporting, so to speak, uh, out of Laserfish. And in fact, just to step back a moment, if you're in the Laserfish client and you do that search, let's say for your invoices that uh, are for that previous month, and it gives you that list in the client, you can actually export that list as you see with the columns along the headers, you can set up your columns, say you know, date, vendor name, uh, invoice amount, et cetera, and then export that as an Excel file or print it out. So you can get built-in reporting out of Laserfish. So it's pretty, uh, pretty neat. I have one follow-up question to the uh, query about uh, searching for images. 
uh, his follow-up question was, uh, is it better to use quick fields or workflow for that sort of search? Uh, okay, so the internet question is, can you use quick fields or workflow and which is better to find a document in the repository that has a certain document type? Is it an image uh, or a PDF? I would suggest that workflow is your better option. Uh, if you don't have quick fields, you do always have, with Laserfish Avante, you do have the workflow engine. So you can do that much easier and without any additional expense of having to buy quick fields. But if you already have quick fields, technically, yes, you could. Uh, but quick fields is really intended to process an image and then store it, uh, whereas workflow can do a lot more manipulation of documents within the repository. So I would say, if I'm reading your question correctly, I would use workflow. All right, any questions on that workflow? All right, let's, uh, um, yes, question. Is the search um, parameter case-sensitive or will apply to all instances of tasks, whether it's a case or a case? Great question from uh, Denise back there. The question is, will the search criteria, is it case-sensitive? So if I'm looking for the word tax, is it uppercase, lowercase? Case does not matter in the search criteria. You could have, have uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase, alternating, and it would still find it. Uh, all lowercase, if you want to be uh, uh, consistent, it does not matter. It, the case is insensitive in searches. All right, so we'll go back to... Uh, also have workflow generate shortcuts and do a folder so if you're regularly checking, if you want to have a list in laser page just real time, workflow can go through and then send a shortcut. It would just be a folder with a list of all those documents that meet that criteria. And it could just be real time updating and get rid of shortcuts on those documents on all the criteria. I, I always think that's a good option too for users in case you're interested. Uh, and those uh, on the internet who might not have heard that, Patrick was saying that uh, back in the example of reporting, uh, the workflow can be built to actually create a set of, for example, those uh, invoices that might be current. We could drop, <coughs> workflow can easily do this, drop shortcuts to all those invoices into a folder that you might monitor that says, here's your current invoices outstanding. And those uh, work, the workflow would keep that list of shortcuts updated so that you always have a current list and never have to worry about either generating reporting uh, on a regular basis. You could always just drop, you know, take uh, your client, navigate to that folder, and there would be your uh, invoices uh, listed. Great idea. Uh, I love that. Um, so that's how do we rename a uh, folder or document? And this can be applied to documents. It does not have to be folders. This is just one example. Uh, but it shows the flexibility of the system. OK, so when I wasn't being quite truthful, you get a couple more workflows here. So we're going to go through just three more. And uh, this is great. I love this. Uh, this is new to LaserFish Workflow 9. If you have LaserFish Workflow 8, uh, you didn't have this opportunity. But you can use or make a workflow into what they call a business process which allows end users to really interact with workflow in a more ad hoc, as needed basis. So instead of waiting for workflow to be triggered because you set a template value uh, or set a particular um, template onto a document or dropped a document into an auto file location, we can actually trigger workflows whenever we want using business processes. And we're going to do this. Uh, example here where we need to delete shortcuts from a current folder. So you'll go into your client, you'll highlight that folder and say, you know what, I need to delete all the workflows, uh, sorry, all the shortcuts that exist here uh, within this folder. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. And we're going to do it with one click uh, capability. As you do workflows, um, most of the time you build them out like we just saw without making them a business process. And new to LaserFish 9, uh, you can make a workflow a business process. And the way you do that is when you first create the workflow, you, on the properties themselves, check the box that says, make this workflow a business process. It's as simple as that. Uh, by default, the two uh, check boxes down below are checked. So you do want to make sure that they are checked. You want to start the business process, and you want to display the 
process information. Uh, that's always handy to have as well. Uh, and that's just uh, a matter of clicking that box and you're good to go. Then you design your workflow as you would. What is its purpose? In this case, we're going to run a little activity to delete shortcuts. And the flow of those activities, it looks fairly familiar here. Uh, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to search within that current location. So we're in a folder, right? And we want to say, hey, look for all the shortcuts in this folder. So our search criteria is just look for any documents that are a, of type S, meaning shortcut, and they are in the percent entry path token. So that means, where are we? Uh, so we delete uh, only the documents that are in the folder that we're in, or delete the shortcuts. And in the for each entry, we're going to find all those entries, and we're going to delete shortcuts. This is a new activity that is available in LaserFish Workflow 9.2. Uh, beforehand, you had to use the delete entry activity. Uh, but in this case, you can actually be more specific and say, hey, I'm going to delete shortcuts. And that's new to Workflow 9.2. Once you've defined your workflow and hit Save, uh, you're going to want to have a workflow that has several start conditions. And uh, this one is going to be a business process start condition. And I'll show you that in our demo here in a moment. But we can define many criteria that makes it uh, uh, limits what this business process can do and when it can be uh, run and by whom. So we'll get into that in a moment as well. But I wanted to show you an example of that because you can see here there's a security option. Uh, as you can see here, everyone is allowed to start this workflow, but I can actually change that and say, hey, only the AP department can run this workflow, or uh, uh, you know, just the, uh, uh, the, the city clerk can run this workflow. Uh, I can also define where it runs. I can say, you know what, it can only run in a certain folder path and no others. So if it's in, you know, it's, let's say I wanted to remove shortcuts in the city clerk's location, I might say, you know what, this can only run if this path contains the city clerk in it. A question. The, the, good question. The, the, the question is, uh, will I discuss uh, adding security to a folder uh, or a document within workflow? Uh, it's not as part of my uh, presentation here, but I can definitely show you that. Uh, it's certainly something that workflow is capable of doing, and there are certain caveats to the way you do it, uh, I, it but it's fun and easy and uh, not a problem to do. Workflow is built to do that. So great question and we can take a look at that. Uh, when you are designing a business process and just uh, setting the values, you have to log in to set your business process start conditions. So you're either going to use Windows Authentication or your user account for Laserfish. So that might pop up. Uh, and then here is an example of the business process and the start rules. So you see the four tabs across the top. We can change the color of this workflow business process. We can set the security, and that's uh, who can start it. In this case, uh, we'll just let everyone start it. But again, uh, we can define certain departments by group or by particular users if we want. Uh, our requirements are, does it start in a particular folder? Uh, or other types of criteria, in fact, uh, is the folder, does it contain certain document types, or if we're running it against a document, is the document type of a particular type? We can do that as well. Then the metadata requirements are, does it have a field, or if that field exists, is there a value in that field? That's the kind of criteria we're looking for here as well. And to make it one click easy for your users, we can add an icon on the icon bar, for that business process. And you saw that uh, uh, in the LaserFish client, uh, there are quite a few already up there. And we can add one in. I'll show you how to customize your icon bar to add that in. So let's get into the demonstration. And we'll close out our previous workflow here. And I don't need to make any of those changes. And so our first workflow here is the delete shortcuts workflow. And as you can see, it already has that starting rule built. But if we edit the rule, 
again, you see that it asks you, you have to be uh, usually an administrator or somebody who can um, create business processes. So that's something that your LaserFish administrator will help you get your access rights to if you don't have them already. Uh, but simply uh, log in typically with your admin account. Just make sure that I type it correctly. And once you've logged in, you can change your color of your business process. You can enable it or disable it. Uh, then we can take a look at the additional tabs, security being one of them. Let's say you want to say, you know what, only add uh, and allow the admin account to start it and I can remove the everyone group. So I can be very specific as to who starts this business process. Uh, the requirements tab is uh, several items. You can add additional conditions. So in fact, I've already added one in here. This means what we need is the, we need to be in a folder in order to start this workflow. So the type equals work, uh, folder in this case. We can add additional conditions and we have several to choose from. I'm not gonna go into all of them, however, they are selectable, so we can say, you know what, the uh, path starts with, and then we can say, you know what, it has to be in the uh, client files folder. So we can be specific as to where this business process can be started from. Uh, metadata requirements, this relates to templates and fields. So if we click here, we can say, you know what, the entry field, account number, uh, is not empty. So we have to make sure that the account number is filled in before this workflow is actually able to be run. So we can set all kinds of criteria uh, based on metadata. And as you saw here, you could use entry tags as well. So fields and tags can be used to limit how this business process would be started. I'm actually not going to actually save any of those because I want to make sure my workflow runs. Uh, so we'll go ahead and look at the workflow itself. And again, it's doing a simple search, looking for any documents uh, or folders that are a shortcut. Doesn't matter what, it's just, is it a folder or a document shortcut? And is it in the current entry path? So the entry path is our location. And then for any one of those, uh, it will then delete the entry. And in fact, uh, I left it as delete entry in here, uh, but if we go to our toolbox, we can find that there is a delete shortcuts activity that we can run instead. Uh, I'm not going to save this. All right, so there's our workflow. And if we go to the client, so now we can go to the client. And notice here is a list of existing business processes at the icon bar. And I told you, well, here, let's add that to the icon bar. The workflow, or in LaserFish Client, if we right click on the icon bar, we can choose to customize that. So we will simply click on customize. We get a pop-up box, and we want to choose commands. And notice there's a section down here called business processes. So here is that business process. And all we need to do is simply drag it up to our icon bar, add it to the end, and click close. And there, we're done. So let's do something interesting. Let's go ahead and let's copy this folder. But yet, I'm going to paste the shortcut in here. So now we have a shortcut here, and maybe we have a uh, didn't want to open that. Sorry, folks. Let's cancel that out. Let's take a copy of that and make a shortcut back down here. Okay, so we have two shortcuts in this taxes folder under Joel's folder. And now we just simply want to say, you know what? Run workflow, run that business process, and do it for me. So you click the start. You know, just click that button. It'll pop up this dialog. You can turn it off if you want, if you run them often. And we'll just say yes. And we'll let workflow do its thing. So now you've just one click started that process. You don't have to do anything else. And it tells you that it successfully ran. 
and voila, shortcuts are gone. So that's the beauty of business process. It allows the end user to interact with your laser system in a much more uh, convenient manner for them. Any questions? Yes? You logged in as a Excuse me, you logged in as an admin and you put that shortcut up on the top on, on the toolbar. Mm -hmm. Is that global or is that for uh, the client? Every user can add that icon to themselves, uh, or we can push that out to the users as well. So uh, administratively, there are some certain tricks that we can do behind the scenes that say, okay, once one user has it, then we can apply it to all the rest of the users. So we can add an icon set to everybody's desktop, or we can add a specific set of columns. So we can predefine the column set and then push it out to the end users as well. Good question. One more internet question. You have an internet question. The question was if uh, if Wordflow does a lot of the, the features that QuickFields does, what's one of the benefits of retaining QuickFields? Good question. Uh, somebody who has QuickFields, the, the advantage of QuickFields, uh, yes, you can use QuickFields to uh, move documents around, but that's out of the box and basic functionality. Uh, with enhanced modules, QuickFields is intended to process the scanned images that it's dealing with and identify words on that page and to apply that information to templates uh, and those fields in that template. Uh, if you have zone OCR in your QuickFields software, you can actually pull a specific value out of a specific area on the page. For example, in the top right corner, you have the invoice and the invoice number. Uh, you want to pull the invoice number off those pages. So you can process images uh, much more explicitly with QuickFields and Zone OCR uh, rather than Workflow. Workflow cannot do anything like that. Workflow can generate text off of a document, and you might be able to search for a word on the page, but it cannot be you cannot tell workflow to look for a certain area on the page and pull information from it. QuickFields is much more specific. Uh, so that's the difference. And hopefully that answers your question. Let me know if uh, that made sense. Just one, uh, uh, another question from the tool perspective, not from um, add or delete folders or subfolders. Is there any functionality in the tool to read a text from the scanned document? In workflow? In general, a workflow or maybe? Yes, and, and so the question is, in the workflow engine, is there an activity that can read the text of a document that has text on it already? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the caveat to your question is, the document in Laserfish or wherever it's coming from needs to have text on it. Yeah, but, but then the workflow can absolutely read the text off of that document. Can we make a panel that if for us, for, for the healthcare business, so uh, we have the acquisitions coming from the from the hospitals, from the from the physicians. So we we may have a different panels, uh, different sections within the acquisition, and then each section can have different set of information. So can we define something in the workflow that uh, section one or section two or section three? read that specific information? Uh, the question is, if you have a, let's say a page that has a top section that says section one and then is followed by information, and then the next section down below in the middle of the page has section two followed by information, uh, and then maybe a third section down below that says section three, explicitly says section three colon and then is followed by information, can we pull that specific section three information off the page? And I would say, with some testing, uh, possibly. Uh, I've, I've done it where I can actually pull, if it's one line, I can pull that one line off of it. So where it's a section three and then it has values on that one line, I can do that with workflow. Uh, if it's multiple lines after section three, um, it depends. Within section three, if there are multiple lines, then? Uh, if we have a start, if we have words that start that area and then end that area, it might be possible. We'd have to test it. So uh, depends. <laughs> the college answer is it depends. <laughs> but I think I, I, yeah, I'd love to explore that with you further. But uh, sure, I think uh, it's something to look at. All right. Well, we're uh, almost at the end. We have one more presentation demonstration of workflow to go, and the well. 
the next one, actually two more. Uh, the next scenario is how do we rename a document um, or use business processes to rename a document in the manner we want it to be renamed. So I was talking earlier, we want to enforce a consistent naming convention for the documents that are in our system. And if they uh, come in and somehow got around our, our auto filing system or somebody renamed it improperly, uh, we want to give the users an ability to rename the document the way it should be. Now this assumes that the template and the fields on that document have been applied properly for that document and we can check for that. But we can do uh, a workflow that says, hey, highlight the document and rename it for me. Therefore, you don't have to worry about mistypes and all that information being in, possibly uh, not correctly entered on that document name. So, uh, and we want to make it one click easy. So, again, like I showed you, we'll add an icon for that on the icon bar. The activities we're going to use in this process are different, and I want to introduce you to some new concepts, possibly. You might not have seen these, but these are really powerful concepts. Uh, we always want to retrieve the field values for that document because we're going to use them to rename the document. However, the assign token values, uh, that's an activity that you might not be familiar with, and we can create tokens that we use in the workflow. We can design our own tokens and use them for various purposes. And then finally, we have a conditional decision activity, and that will allow us to branch out and make decisions. Does the customer's name have a middle initial or not? And if so, we need to rename that document slightly differently than if it did because, well, one has a middle initial one doesn't. And if we always just tried to name it with a middle initial, we might get an extra space on the end uh, because we used uh, a, an inconsistent naming convention. So we'll take a look at that as well. Uh, the flow of activities of this workflow would be retrieve the field values of the document first. And then for the tokens, I actually created some simple tokens here that would help uh, in the naming. And for that internet question that we got earlier, can we pull the document year, document name, uh, the date field? Can we pull a date either, whether it's a document date or actually a field that is a date, can we pull the year out of there? Well, using uh, some formatting, yes, we can. We can actually pull the year, indicated here by the four Ys, we can pull the year out because the date in LaserFish might be month, day, and year. Um, we want to rejigger re that and change it up and say, you know what, put the name in uh, with a year, hyphen, month, hyphen, date. So we can pull just that year out. We can pull other values out of that date as well. So that's uh, what we're showing here. And I'm creating a token called formatted date, and that's pulling out uh, in the manner that I want. Uh, I'm also going to pull out the name without the middle initial. So that token is being created here with the, if you see it up there, uh, kind of highlighted that should be yellow, but uh, the client name hyphen no MI. So that stands for no middle initial. Oh, if you notice in the rename entry activity, in that particular branch where it has a middle initial, I'm going to use the middle with middle initial token. And then if it's, you know, with the, I actually have those reversed, but uh, if uh, we have a middle initial, uh, we would then apply it uh, in the appropriate renaming entry activity. Okay. Question? Now, are these documents that you're renaming, are they under a general search, or are these ones that are templated and you know they're specific? Good question. The, the specific example is we're going to highlight the document itself. So we don't have to search for it. We're actually just going to say run this workflow on the currently highlighted document and change the name. How can it do that for, uh, like Good question. And, and the follow-on question, yes, exactly. The follow-on question is, well, can we just rename documents in general? Well, sure. We can do a search for all the documents, wherever they may be, or whatever type, and run a workflow activity like this that says, hey, pull those field values and rename the document like this. So this is just kind of being more specific, but we can just pull it back and say, find all these documents and rename them all at once in bulk. And that's perfect for workflow. I do this all the time. All right, so let's take a quick demonstration run through that. Close our workflow here. 
And so now we have a business process that says rename selected documents. And again, I have some conditions. So in this case, what I want to make sure is that we're not renaming documents everywhere in the system. We're not renaming folders. And it's not being triggered by some other outside entity. So in fact, uh, we do have some requirements here that I've set up. And those are to make sure that the type of entity that we're, or entry that we're dealing with is a document and that uh, it's in the client files location. Uh, we can define other values, but it's really uh, handy here. And we want to make sure that it's not being triggered by the workflow account itself, that an individual user is triggering this. So we'll open it up, take a look at the tokens. And what happens with the tokens, let me highlight the uh, tokens that we created here. I'll kind of make it a little bit bigger. And I created the token formatted date. And in fact, uh, if we were to look at this token here, and this is for the benefit of our internet, if we look at the token dialog, we actually can highlight that date value. So that's a field called date on the template. And we just simply need to come in here, check the box for apply formatting. And you can say, you know what, just use the year. And that will allow you to pull the year right out of the field. And I just hit the uh, little search button there. And that takes you to the online LaserFiche help. And this will help you with your token formatting. So anything in LaserFiche, if you hit the F1 key or hit the uh, question mark button or um, tool help, It'll take you to the online LaserFish help. And this is, I suggest, it's so in-depth what LaserFish has here that I can answer almost any question by going here. Uh, I, in fact, keep going to here over the years uh, because they have such a depth of information in their online help. I don't think you'd ever have enough time to read through it yourself, uh, but uh, there you go. Minimize that. Here. Okay, so we're back into our formatting. I'm going to leave that formatting as it was. And the tokens are here as well. And as you can see, it flows through in general. So let's go ahead and look at LaserFish and let's go rename a document. So we have, there's a uh, document in our application folder. And if I look at the metadata, it's using a different uh, template. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to create a dummy document here, just for testing. Let's go ahead and create a new document. Uh, we're using a template called client files. There we go. And I'm going to put, uh, oh, let's just use my name. Put in a middle initial in this case. We're going to choose a category because our, our naming convention uses the category. So this document is a legal document. Uh, we don't require document type, but we could set that in there. Uh, again, these fields can be set, any one of them can be set as required fields. Uh, so. Uh, if you need to make sure that the document uh, is there, you can do that. I'm going to put in today's date, and I'm going to use a shortcut hitting the space bar, which puts in, puts in today's date in the date field. So we can see that it's 07-22-2015, and that's about it. I don't need any other values. All right. Click OK. So here's our document. now. now now I realize, oh, this document really needs to be renamed. And so let's customize our workflow. We'll go into commands, business processes. We are going to add our rename selected document workflow here. And so what we'll do is simply highlight the document. In fact, notice that I'm highlighting a folder. My icon is now grayed out. I can't run it. It's saying, you know, you better be highlighting a document because I'm not going to let you do it. Oh, and by the way, if I'm in a different folder, it won't let you run it either. It has to be inside the client files location in order for me, for me to run it. And it has to be a document. So notice, it's paying attention. So it's going to try and limit you 
to what you can do. So let's run that. I'm just going to click yes. And in a second, there we go. As you can see, it took the category type of legal, it took the date, reformatted that date, starting with the year, and figured out if it was a middle initial or not and applied it properly. Really fun. Uh, I'll be happy to build these out for you anytime. Just uh, call up and we'll make an appointment. <laughs> Oh, we have an internet question. Okay. Someone was wondering if there's a good example on the internet somewhere where they can see live demos of this. Whether it's a YouTube video or something, you know, versus actually seeing it versus just text examples. Uh, good question. The there are some webinars that we have uh, available on our city's digital support site that will address certain workflows, but not everything. Today's demonstration that you see here will be available, uh, but uh, you know, it's it's. It depends. Uh, if you're looking for a particular workflow, why don't you let me know? Or like formatting, I think, is what. Yeah, doing. formatting it's itself. Um, I don't know if there are specific workflows uh, or videos that go into the such depth as to formatting and tokens and all those kind of details that I've shown you here. Uh, come to the Laser Fish and Power Conference in January, and you certainly can learn it all. Uh, but uh, let me know if you have specific needs, and I can try and help you find that. All right, and I think we have one last one. We'll go back up. And finally, uh, there are many times when you might need to deal with uh, the removal of folders that maybe don't have anything in them. Uh, you might have some folders that over time you created but don't have any documents in them or they just don't need to exist anymore. And this is a business process that, that can address that where we can tag documents and then we can do something with them. Uh, I'm not a fan of deleting things right away. Uh, workflow being so powerful, you could end up deleting folders that really should not be, em you know, might be empty but are waiting for something. You might use a workflow and delete those empty folders by accident. And in fact, during my testing, I actually did that. So you don't want to let workflow run away from you and do things that you really didn't want to do. You might think, okay, it'll just do it for one but it could do it for thousands and do it really rapidly. So workflow being as powerful as it is, is a double-edged sword. Yes, we can do great amounts of changes in bulk uh, in a repository rather rapidly. But on the flip side, you can make big changes to your repository rather rapidly, and that might, might not be a good thing. Um, so I, in this demonstration, want to just present the uh, activity of a tagging activity instead of a deletion. You can do a search for those tagged documents and then delete them, or do a search for those tagged folders and then delete them. But um, that's my public safety announcement for today. Uh, the activities that we're going to use, they look very familiar. Search repository, and we're going to use the for each entry for those search results. And we're going to use the assign tags activity here as well. Uh, and that's slightly new. You might not have seen that, but it's uh, another activity in workflow. In the search syntax of this workflow, though, I'm going to introduce you to an advanced concept called child name. And what you see here is, and I'm going to show you the, the syntax, we have a hyphen, which stands for not, and then any child name in existence, which means not child name with anything in there. So if there's a child, whether that's a document or a folder, uh, it, and it has nothing in there, there are no children. So if you're in a folder, for example, and you have subfolders, um, if that folder has nothing in it, that's a child that has no entries, right? So that's going to be part of the syntax of our search. Uh, so again, the flow of the workflow itself is search, find the entries, and then assign tag. And let's get into that demonstration. Let's go back. Okay. So in that workflow, we're going to remove, close that one out. And the last one is we are going to delete empty folders. And again, uh, I set up some criteria. Make sure it's a folder. Make sure it's in a particular path. Uh, and then we can set up security for who could set it off if you wanted to. We'll open up the workflow. And let's take a look at that search criteria. And I'm going to highlight this for you. So the search criteria just basically says look for the folder name 
and we're going to look in a particular path within the highlighted path, but not any children. So it looks for any entry uh, folder, basically. Uh, type equals F, as in Frank, and without children. Basically, it says any folder without anything inside of it, we're good to go. Uh, then we just cycle against those, and then we assign a tag to that folder, and we simply would select a choice of tags within our choice. And then later on, not using workflow, we can then just search in the client using that tag and say, find me the folders with that tag, and then do whatever you needed to, whether you need to delete them or just rename them, whatever you might need to do. All right. Like inactive. Uh, cor correct. Uh, another suggestion from the uh, audience is to maybe even just simply move those folders manually into another folder. So you've tagged them, you search for them, and then you can say, hey, take all these and I'm going to manually move them somewhere else. Absolutely. Uh, and you can even tell a workflow to do that for you as well. Uh, there's no limits to what you can do with workflow within the repository. It's amazing how much you can do. And if you have any questions or want to build a specific workflow with my help, feel free to make an appointment and I can do that for you and with you so that uh, you can learn how to do it yourself. So with that workflow in place, we'll go to the client and most of our tax folders have nothing in them, right? So if we go back, and I'm hitting the backspace key, uh, you can also use that to go back and forth as well. Uh, the there's the back button up here. So if we wanted to go through this folder and say, hey, delete all the doc any folders that have no children, let's go ahead and run that. So again, let's make this one click. Go to commands, business processes. We're going to delete empty folders. And now it's something we can run. And so we can highlight the tax folder and say, Hey, you know what? Just look for anything that has nothing in it. And no children refers to documents, not other folders. Children can be documents or folders, uh, but if you, but if typically, if you're looking in a folder and it has a document inside of it, then uh, it's not going to meet that criteria. All right, and. I ran that. It might have, my design might not have been set, but it uh, typically it would just delete these folders and you're all done. Uh, so the workflow ran. I think uh, redesigning this workflow might take a little time, but if you're willing to sit through the redesign, let's take a look and see why it didn't run properly. Let's go ahead and take a look at our most recently run workflows. And because it's a business process, uh, the let's take a look at that workflow ran. Oh, it assigned tags. My mistake. I was thinking it was going to delete folders. What did it do though? Don't delete folders like I just told myself I'm not going to do. It assigned a tag to the folder. So in here, if we look at the metadata, uh, here's a little handy tip I like to add. If I'm using tags quite often, in fact, I will add the task for view tags, and I'll add it to my icon bar. And so I can highlight that. Where'd you go now? Oh, interesting. Okay, it's all the way over to the left. Let's add it, move it around here. Let's move that down here. Okay, so I'm going to view tags on this folder, and I told it to um, say it's approved for destruction. So that was the tag that it was going to assign, and so now you can see that the folder has it, and now with that, I can then go into Laserfish, and I can go to my client files folder and do a search. and do a search for folders and find the folders with the tag. And there's the folders with those tags. 
So now you can choose to do anything you want. Delete them, move them around, rename them. There you go. Would consultants be different colors? Uh, the question is, can folders be different colors? Uh, out of the box, without metadata assigned to the folder, no. They would look like this yellow kind of orangish color. But if it has a template assigned to it, uh, the folder should typically, if the template itself has a color, uh, should show a color. Um, we'd have to go into the administration console and change that, but uh, folders can have colors. But they would be using a metadata a template assigned to it in order to get it to change color. Otherwise, out of the box, they're all going to look the same. OK, good question. So again, the question was, can folders have different colors? Uh, if they have templates, uh, they can be set up to have colors. But typically, without a template assigned to that folder, they would all look that same color that you see here. Is, uh, the question is, is workflow uh, an add-on? And no, it comes out of the box with your LaserFish uh, Avante product. So. Uh, you actually don't need to be an admin to build LaserFish workflows. Uh, you need to be, you might need to get, be able to get into certain places in the repository, which might require admin rights. But if you're uh, even in the AP department uh, and you are only working in AP folders and you want to build a workflow that relates to those folders, you certainly could do that and you don't have to be an admin to do so. Okay. No. So, so this Avanti is different than the LaserFish 9. Well, LaserFish 9 has two flavors, Avante and Rio. Re, uh, Avante is what you probably typically have. It's for users under Patrick. Uh, what's the difference between Avante and Rio? Uh, yes, yeah, the number of licensed users. Oh, no. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, the, the, uh, the difference between Avante and Rio is that Rio is prepackaged. Each user has web access to the next trip. And then Rio also has unlimited servers and unlimited repositories. So if you ever want to have a separate instance of LaserFish, testing, development, in different departments, uh, or multiple repositories, maybe one for HR, accounting, et cetera, client files, et cetera, down the list. Um, that's where Rio comes in handy. Rio is more expensive for user because it comes all bundled with this, whereas Avante is more all the time. Otherwise, it's the same product, just different bundles and buses. Right, so Avante is your normal package that you might have. If you're a large institution or a large county, city, uh, you might have Rio. Uh, but uh, the Avante product, which is what you have, LaserFish 9.2, uh, will have workflow right in the box, ready for you. All right, so let's um, let's wrap up here. So we went over the uh, workflows: one, to add a new folder uh, or subfolder to existing folders. We then also uh, renamed an existing subfolder, and we also went through. Uh, several business processes that allows your end users to interact with LaserFish uh, ad hoc whenever they want, but yet in a controlled manner. So workflow and business process workflows are really neat tools, fantastic, uh, efficient tools, and I highly encourage you to uh, think about using them more in your business and in your processes. And uh, let us know how we can help. And thank you, and have a great paper of the day. <laughs>